Welcome back. Now let's dive into the equipment you'll need to craft effective and safe reloads. Though you know, I'm going to recommend we go against conventional wisdom and suggest you use a progressive or semi-automatic press. To make it easy for you to see each step, I will show you each on a turret press, a single, a single station turret press. Just remember though, using a turret or a single station press, you must perform each function, a cartridge at a time, for each step of the way. Then, having demonstrated the eight steps, I'll show you that a progressive machine will simplify every single operation in the reloading process for you. By the way, I'm going to recommend that we begin by reloading pistol bullets, which are generally simpler to reload than rifle cartridges, a subject that I'll cover in, in later videos. Let's begin by assuming that you own some clean, once-fired empty cartridge cases. Firing a bullet is a remarkably violent event, especially for that cartridge. Pressures inside the cartridge case quickly increase and the, the brass case wall expands tightly against the barrel chamber wall, so the cartridge walls stretch a bit. Here the dial caliper shows the diameter of a fired cartridge. Now compare that to the diameter of an unfired cartridge. You see, almost nine thousandths difference in diameter. So step one in our reloading process is to compress the cartridge case back to its original size. We can squeeze it back to original measurements in a tool called a sizing decapping die. The outer part of the die squeezes the cartridge case back to size. That inner pin punches the old primer out. This die that I'm showing you has a tungsten carbide insert, a super hard metal alloy that makes the resizing operation easier, plus it makes the die last a lot longer too. I've placed the sizing depriming die in the press and I've adjusted it. Oh, more about that adjustment need later. If we now cycle the handle down and then back up, the ram will push your empty cartridge into the die. With that one stroke, you both resize the cartridge and push out the old primer. Moving the handle back up pulls the cartridge case back out of the die. You now have accomplished your first two steps. For our third step, we will have to insert the terminus to seat, a new primer. You know, it, it, it's at this point that we're starting to handle explosive primers and, and gunpowder, and I have to insert here my hold harmless agreement. Reloading, incorrectly done, is dangerous and can even kill you and the people nearby. So. You're continuing to watch this video is your contract with me that you are absolutely responsible for everything that you do and you hold me in no way responsible for any adverse events. If that is not a good contract for you, you please just turn off the video and watch something else. Push this holder arm in and carefully bring the cartridge case back down into that ram. Seating the primer must be done very, very carefully. Think back to that picture of that protruding anvil. You could consider that we're doing more than simply seating the primer in the pocket. We are actually sensitizing it. When the primer is correctly seated, it rests just the slightest amount below the cartridge base. And you can, you can feel that it is in deep enough easily with your finger, which is generally more accurate and a bit easier than trying to measure it step with a caliper. For step four, we must put a slight flare on the mouth of the cartridge case, and that requires another tool. This polished steel will ever so slightly flare the mouth of the cartridge case so it will accept the new bullet. As the ram moves the shell plate up, the cartridge gets pushed into this flaring tool. and. And after this, we have a sized, reprimed, slightly flared cartridge case. Our next step, number five, is to charge the case with powder. And that will be done with a different tool generally called a powder hopper or, or powder dispenser. And, and I've adjusted it to deliver the correct amount of powder into the cartridge case already. You will likely be loading more than one case at a time, and so this step is done as you see here, one at a time. 
we must be absolutely certain about the quantity of that powder charge. So step six is critical because mistakes happen and we must check that powder has in fact dropped into the case and that we've dropped the correct amount. So you're going to need to weigh the powder for the say first half dozen or so charged cases to be certain that your hopper is dropping the correct amount. When you've charged all of the cases, carefully, slowly look into the cases to make sure that the quantity is about the same. It's critical. For step seven, we'll place a bullet on top of the flared cartridge case mouth. Bringing the operating handle down pushes the bullet into an appropriate depth into the cartridge case. Now, e even though the bullet is at the correct depth in the case, the flare will likely interfere with the cartridge feeding into your chamber. And worse, the bullet may get pushed down deeply into the cartridge case during feeding or, or it might move during the gun's recoil. Removing the flare and crimping the bullet firmly in place is our next and final step. The next cycle of the handle removes the flare in the cartridge case neck as the cartridge enters the crimping die. It sounds tedious, doesn't it? But it's really, it's really not. It does require you to handle each cartridge case a minimum of eight or nine times. And more handling introduces the human error factor into the equation, doesn't it? And, and, and that's another reason I recommend the progressive reloader. Now let's consider the equipment you're going to need. First and foremost, you must protect your eyes. You're dealing with moving machinery, metal, explosives, flammables. Accidents do happen. You may be able to tolerate small pieces of primer or bullet shrapnel in the skin of your face, but once you lose an eye, that eye is gone forever. Second, you see, you see me always using gloves. I can recommend these inexpensive nitrile gloves as being robust enough to last through an entire reloading session. The gloves will protect you, at least in part, from the lead in the primers and the lead in the bullets. Lead is particularly dangerous for children and their growing bones, and, and it's up to you to protect your children and yourself. Once you remove your gloves, wash your hands with warm water and plenty of soap. The conventional wisdom that you should use cold water to avoid opening pores is completely unscientific and incorrect since lead toxicity comes almost entirely from the lead you inadvertently put into your mouth, please don't bring food or drink to the reloading bench. Next, a fire extinguisher is critical. Also, you need a sturdy bench to hold your press and good lighting so you can keep track of the various steps. In our next video, I'll show you how the progressive reloader will save you time, give you more consistent reloads, and remove a large part of the potential for human error. If you sign your name, your real name, to the comments section below, I'll, I'll try to answer your questions. If you think the video has helped you, give it a thumbs up. If you don't, well, the comments I'd really like to get will tell me how I can improve it.